Okay guys, we are here with the 2020 Subaru Forester Sport. This white color here. A lot of orange accents going all the way around. This is a courtesy car. This is our fourth or fifth courtesy car in 2020, 2021. Um, lots of Subaru problems, so might as well check this out while we have it. Really cool. I actually really like this thing. I'm quite impressed with it. And um, just guys wanted to show you guys around. This new Forester. Of course, the sport badge right there. Single exhaust outlet. Really cool stuff. Okay, so this is the sport package. As you guys can see, there's orange trim all over the place on the roof rails up here. Really cool orange trim. There is orange trim on the side sills. There is orange trim on the front splitter area over here. Um, really cool. Now, on the front end, this is Subaru's newer Forester design. This came out in like 2018, 2019, um, riding on the Subaru Global platform. So is there a more rigid, more um, newer, modular platform that all the new cars are based on? Um, I actually quite like it. Some things I don't like, some things I do really like, um, chassis feel and, and improvements in the quality have definitely gone up a big, big bunch. So on the new Foresters, you can get full LED headlights. This one only has the LED beams. This is just a little reflector on the um, more premium models. This whole piece can be an LED, like this Hawkeye shape. I think it looks better with that. This one also gets the LED lower fog lights. Um, a nice little option to have. I, I like this white paint, but these look better in a darker color. I specifically, these sport models definitely look better in <clears throat> a darker color. I do like all the blacked out grills and trim and everything on the sport version. These are, of course, the sport wheels as well. I actually quite like these um, better than the other wheels that are on offer. Um, they suit the car really well. And it's a really, so far as I've been driving on the highway and everything, it's a really, really good daily um, family SUV. I think one of the best in class, this and the Mazda CX-5 are, I think some of the best in class. Um, out back, as you can see, more of that orange trim all across the bottom. Only one exhaust outlet. <clears throat> we have a built-in spoiler. Not all of them get the spoiler actually, so this is one thing to note. More of that black trim going on across. And then if you want to open up the boot, you can open up the trunk, hydraulic struts, this one is not an automatic. You can get an automatic um, tailgate if you want um, in the higher end models. Loads and loads and loads and loads of space back here. We have some additional floor mats and mirror stuff. Um, of course, you have your cargo cover right there. Um, little pockets and tie downs all over the place. I believe we have a full size spare in this one underneath all this stuff. Um, it looks like it underneath there. Um, can't really see, there's a lot of stuff in here. Of course, you can pull the seats down by pulling these things and pulling them back up. And that's pretty much stuff on back here. You do have a lot of space back here. There's a lot of space um, back here. I, you can honestly fit like seven seats almost. They really took out all the um, trunk space for the uh, cargo, but that's how I'm just saying there's a decent amount of storage back here if you want to store a lot of stuff. Close this up. Awesome. Let's go into the back seats first, actually. So opening this door, everything feels really solid. Just gonna note on that, opening the door, it's a nice solid thunk to it. There's nothing um, really tinny or hollow or plasticky. I like that. Um, these back doors are really nice. Even the front doors, I do like what they're doing with the sport model. Lots of blends of materials going on here. I really like this material on here. It's like this um, um, fabric texture material with a little bit of orange accent into it. And of course it has the sport badge right on it right there you have a nice soft touch on fake leather material with real stitching here this is real stitching um, probably done by a machine but nonetheless it is a real um cloth in there really cool soft um this is a bit of a harder touch plastic over here this soft textile plastic here um the door pulls don't feel too cheap which is nice buttons all feel premium really nice to solid and um, nice nice big door cabin right here for your water bottles and stuff and just a nice overall general view of the rear seats. Let's hop in. Closing the door, nice solid thunk. The Subaru Global Platform is pretty rigid. Um, this is my driving position. I'm around 6'1". Um, 
And I have a lot of leg room back here, a lot of room under to stretch my legs out. I can stretch my legs out almost all the way. Um, lots of knee room. And if, you know, if there's shorter people, you're definitely gonna have more space up here. Um, lots of headroom too. I'm gonna say I about have like an inch of headroom, which is pretty nice with my head all the way rest of the back too. So you can relax. And we do have the moon roof up here. So that is gonna impede into the headspace just a little bit. Not too bad though. But um, it's actually a quite a nice space to be back here. The seats are very comfortable. Um, they have a nice um, kind of like a scoop to them. So you don't like feel like you're sitting on a flat box. It is a bench style seat. This again, this nice cloth material. They're almost a little bit bolstered too, which is nice. And you do have a center seat, the center console that does fold down to give you cup holders. Cool. Again, that nice stuff on the door situation. Back here, we do have um, air vents for the climate control and two USB ports, which is nice. Really cool stuff. And you know, just talking from over the years, Subaru has significantly bumped up their quality and um, <clears throat> interior and feel and material. This is a really nice interior, especially for this class. And even the backs of the seats are coated in this sort of pleather material, really easy to clean off. And you do have actual pockets. You actually have two mini, four po oh wow, three pockets. So you have a mini pocket here, pocket here, a big pocket. This one also gets that exact same layout. Really nice stuff for rear seat storage. Easy to clean off instead of it being cloth. This is easily, um, can be wiped off too. So that's really nice and especially a nice thing to keep a note of. So now let's go hop into the front seats where um, your drivers and our front passengers are gonna spending most of the time. Pretty easy to get in and out of as well. Again, that nice solid thunk. Just to take note of, um, this car does have a puddle light underneath here that's gonna project onto the ground at night. There's also our heated mirrors. Now, the car is on right now, but it does have keyless access, as you can see the key right here. Really nice, um, nice heavy Subaru key. I, I do quite like these a lot. Um, so you can just keep it in your pocket, and if the car is locked, you can just put your hand on the door right here and open and lock it, you'll press that button. But the car is on right now, so we're just gonna open the door. And up front, we have the exact same nice treatment on the doors, so we're not really gonna go over that. But just taking a general look at the overview of this interior, I'm actually really impressed with this. So let's hop in and talk more about it. Again, that nice solid thunk. Of course, the front two windows are automatic up and down, so we're gonna pull that up. And we are right next to a freeway, so if you guys can hear, now it's really quiet in here, which is nice. I'm just gonna pull the seat back so you guys can get a better view of the interior for now. Um, and yeah, I actually think this is a really great space to be. Um, we had another Lona car that was a lower model Forester, and coming from that into this, I'm like, wow, what did they do that's so different? I actually like this a lot better. Um, so since this is a sport model, there is orange everywhere, as you can see. If you don't like orange, I suggest getting a different model, <laughs> definitely. Orange um, trim piece down here biggest i think the biggest piece of orange there is orange on your air vents on the two sides and orange stitching this is real stitching it may be done by machine but it is real stitching you can see the individual um, fabrics in there some people do like fake stitching that's just like colored indents again that continues on the doors that we saw on the back um and across the dash i like the multi-use of material so you have this um, soft touch injectable mold of plastic another type of injectable mold of plastic with a softer material it's kind of like a more um textured design these pieces right here your glove box of course and um over here on that that carries down over here as well i like this um separation with these metal um bars right here really nice looks very expensive actually and this nice soft material continues down the center console everything's super super solid like i said suru has turned their build quality up to 12 really nice i really like what they're doing with their build quality on their interiors everything feels really well built solid nothing feels cheap or plasticky unless you start going down all the way down to the bottom edges where you're gonna get more wear and tear which is actually really good um so you don't damage the nicer materials um now let's talk about everything that's in front of us okay guys so now that we are on the interior and the front end i think it's important to talk about all the stuff that you're seeing in front of you because there is a lot going on um this is the sport model i believe this is an upgraded screen because um on the other forest that we had as a tester um <clears throat> there was a much smaller screen so this is a full this is the biggest screen you can get on the forester right now if you get for an outback or a legacy sedan you have a massive um portrait style screen like an ipad tablet stuck on there um not too big of a fan of that i kind of like this one a little bit more it's much more easy to use so what do we have here so 
First off the bat, since this is a sport model, you do get different modes down here. Now, all the all of the Enforcers um, get X mode, but this one gains things like dirt, snow, and mud, and snow and dirt, which I can show you up in the screen right here. When I change it, it's going to change it to these different screens right here, and it also changes on the additional display up there to give you some off-road settings. It also has hill descent control, as you can see, for the function right there. If I change it to snow and deep snow and mud, it shows that and also changes it over there. And to go back into normal, you just push down and you're back in normal. This also, since these are, are additional modes, this moves the traction control button over here. On regular models, um, the traction control button would be in the centerpiece as well. We do have heated seats, no heated steering wheel in this one, which is kind of annoying. I wish it had a heated steering wheel. Would have been a nice um, feature, I think. Um, and this one has, of course, the eyesight package. I've been testing this out on the highway, and I absolutely am impressed with this um, for what it is at this price level. This is an incredible system. I know Hyundai and Kia have a really good system as well, but this is a really, really good system. I'm quite impressed with Subaru um, with this. It has um, things like greater cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot, warning. Um, I can... Um, help you bump you into the lanes with the steering wheel there's forward collision warning there's rear um automatic brake. there's a lot of stuff going on here um so uh, there's a lot of safety systems you can turn them off and on if you don't really want them of course it has auto stop start i hate that so i always turn it off that just turns the engine off at stoplights and you come to a full stop to save fuel i don't even think it saves fuel i think it wastes fuel because you have to turn the engine on all the time but I don't, i'm not a big fan of it so i always turn that off um Going back to the interior, let's focus on your driver center first because I think that's important. Um, I really, really love this steering wheel. I like the size of it. It's a perfect size and diameter. Um, it's really nice to hold in the hand. There's different grip points. I like the orange stitching on it. I like the general design of it. But what I don't like is the button layout. I've kind of gotten more used to it, but there's just so much going on and it looks really cluttered and messy to the eyes at first. You'll get used to it if you own one of these, but let's try to break this down so right here you have your media and infotainment system um, controls you have your own um, track controls you have volume up and down you change your sources and then this button controls that display up there so you can cycle through all the different menus as you can see all the menus up here i really like this display it's really nice i'm um, pretty quick you can see all your safety systems you can see the all-wheel drive system and your tilt different um, gauges and clusters you also have your climate controls up here and the time so that's that. I'm going to leave it on this display for now. I really like that display. It's cool. Um, then you have your Siri button and under picking up the phone and then hanging up the phone button. Um, and these um, little three controls down here, if you guys can see them, these control that display over here. So you can cycle through all these gauges, tire pressure, whole bunch of different stuff in here. I like to just keep it on speed and I'll show you why later. Um, <clears throat> and then over here, we have <clears throat> a few things going on. So this entire panel is for your um, adaptive cruise control settings, as well as the auto steer. Well, I wouldn't call it auto steer, but steering assist, let's call it that. I'm gonna show you how this works on the highway in just a minute, but simple, real quick, this is to change your following distance from the car in front of you. You can set it by double tapping this down. You can turn it on and off by pressing this button. By pressing that button, it's gonna prepare it right there so it's going to be active and it also brings up their screen up there this doesn't mean it's on it just means it's active and by pressing this button you can disable these these are individual settings so you can have um your radar cruise control but turn off the steering assist or you can have the steering assist and turn off radar cruise control really nice actually to have these separate um so then that shows up there and you have this little display to kind of show you what's going on it also shows you the road it'll show you a car in front and it reads the two lanes very similar to like a tesla style system actually really impressive like i said before and i'll show you that a little bit later this right here is your intelligent normal driving mode and you have a sport sharp on the regular foresters this is just a sport button but since it is the sport model you get a sport sharp so that's how subaru does it does it with the hashtag i'll show you the little display that it does on here here's sport sharp si drive and you have regular um modes i actually really like this button it does do a big difference and i'll show you guys that when we're driving a little, little bit later Coming to the center display and center console area, there's a lot of nice stuff going on here. This is Subaru's Starlink infotainment system. I happen to really like it quite personally. Um, go home. These buttons feel a little bit cheaper than the other buttons in the interior, which I kind of wish they would change. And I hate the gloss black around it. Thankfully, you're, you don't see it too much actually. So they kind of did a good job with just keeping it here, even though it's in like a high area touch point, it's a little bit annoying, but it, it's not too bad. Um, 
so it looks pretty basic at first, but there's actually a lot of stuff in here. In your settings, you have a, a lot of different customizable things, Wi-Fi hotspots, software updates, sound settings, phone settings, of course, individual vehicle settings as well. So there's a lot of, there is a lot of um, customization actually going on, which is quite shocking for a vehicle in this class. Going home, you have your phone settings, you can go to Subaru Starlink, which will connect to the um, system. I don't really have that, so um, we can't do that. Then you can go to your apps, built-in apps. Of course, it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Love those. Radio settings, different media settings. And I oh, went to settings already. And my Subaru, which is a like personalization um, feature. Really nice stuff. I love the volume button that's um, still here. And that tune scroll buttons. And you have hot buttons if you don't want to touch the screen all the time. Really nice. CD player still exists, um, of course. Two USB ports down here, an aux cord, and a cigarette lighter um, port. Nice storage space, no wireless charging. I feel like they could throw that in right there really easily if they had to. Um, the nice space for it. Also, we have your uh, vehicle brake hold and our electronic parking bake right there. Two cup holders and a little storage cubby and a felt lined um, center console. A little bit small in the center console, actually. Um, you do have this little divider tray though you can put in. Oh, okay, that was supposed to go on top. I'll stay down there for now. And I do like the... Um, armrest <laughs> i forgot what it's called for a second um it has a little bit of cushion to it right in the center stitching it has a fake leather material the active material really nice again i also really love these seats um i love this cloth material again it's gonna get dirty as you can see there's a little bit of dirt there um but i just i just happen to like it i think subaru designed it to be durable so it can be clean so there's that much better than like a beige interior never get a beige interior with cloth terrible idea um speaking from experience Again, I, this nice um, faux leather material, whatever it is on the side, really like double stitching going around here. Really nice, real stitching, more stitching. I like the different um, contours to it. It actually hugs you um, in pretty well, not tight, but just a nice, it, you feel secure in these seats is the best way to put it. And I like the little sport badge that's like tacked onto the side really right there. Again, really nice stuff going on in the interior. We have our lit up, visors right there um, on both sides sunglass holder here up here you can see your stuff for your emergency sos system if you want to use that um and here's one thing i'm going to talk about this right now that i find a little bit annoying subaru has put the software safety systems all throughout the interior what i'm what do i mean by this so you have your radar cruise control and all that stuff right here up here we have lane departure warning this just beeps at you when you get out of the lanes. You, I always have that off. It's really annoying. Um, this one is your button for front um, front emergency braking. I like to have that on. That's that's a nice um, emergency backup feature to have. Down here, you have your auto stop start, and you have your blind spot button right here. I don't know why there's stuff all over the place. I wish it was kind of all just like right down there. There's like three blank buttons. These buttons could easily go right there. So just one little complaint there. If you want to constantly press those buttons, you're going to have to like get a muscle memory of where they are. Um, if your lights right here, LED, which is really nice. And I really love this moonroof. It opens up the cabin. You have a cover right here. And of course, it does itself open by pressing this button. Um, it's a little cold and it might rain in a second, so I'm not going to open it right now. And again, you have a nice view of the rear seats as well. One other thing with the infotainment system, we, of course, we do have a backup camera. So we put our foot on the brake, shift into reverse. You can see the backup camera right there. Really nice backup camera. It has tra trajectory. It also has parking sensors and rear automatic braking and cross traffic alert. Really nice stuff there. Help you in those grocery um, shop parking lots. Um, this one, since it is a sport model, also has paddle shifters, as you can see. The regular foresters do not have paddle shifters and it also has a manual mode down here i have a controversial opinion on this and i quite like them i'll get to that while we're driving later but i actually quite like to have them and ra i'd rather have them than not have them even though this is a cbt gearbox paired to a 2.5 liter flat four cylinder engine i think it's like 175 176 horsepower might be 180 now I'll double check that and put that in the description right below um so yeah there's that and one other note before we get to a drive as i actually really love these um analog gauges right here i love that there's a sport logo on them i really love the attention to detail with the orange trim on each of the in insides of the dials as well as around the dials 
I think it looks really good. Um, even, you know, everyone's going to digital displays. Subaru has a digital display. They're going to bring it to the U.S. very soon. But I happen to really like um, those dials. So I like how they look. Really nice. Um, and just quickly, we have our climate controls that um, show up in the upper display so it doesn't interrupt this display. Um, nothing really too big there. It does have automatic climate control. Works really well. Nice stuff there. Um, so I say let's take this on a drive. And let me show you guys some of the other cool features about this Forester. Okay, guys, let's go and take this on a drive to show you some of the more cool features about this Forester right here. I also forgot to mention the power, the driver's seat is full power and lumbar. Everything else is manual, just how it is. Okay, so put it in drive. Really like the shifter too. Really nice. Feels really sturdy. Um, going off, doors will automatically lock. Hopefully, in a second. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, there we go. Um, cool, solid thunk going on there. So, off the bat, I think this is a great, 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 great daily driver. I'm super comfortable, super smooth, super composed on the road. Um, I really like the eyesight system on the highway as well. I've been testing it out, kind of getting used to it. It took a little bit at first to get used to, but now I learned to love it. I understand it, and I want one now. <laughs> I kind of want one with that system. I quite like it. Um, as you can see, this has a CBT gearbox paired to a flat four cylinder engine. Um, you do get that nice boxer engine grumble all the time. I'm quite familiar with it. I've had Subarus our entire life. If you're not used to it, get used to it. <laughs> I quite like it. If not, go, you can move somewhere else to a different um, competitor in this class. Um, like I said before, it's really quiet in here. The ride is really good. It's very compliant over bumps. We're on a pretty smooth um, stretch of road right here, but um, New York is not known for their good roads, so I, I can guarantee you we're going to encounter something with some serious potholes at some point. Um, because it does happen, I can tell you that. But I don't know if you guys can really pick this up, but there's really no sound. I do feel isolated from the exterior. That's not something I could have said with our 2014 and 2013 Crosstrek and Impreza from Subaru. It sounds like I'm actually outside of the car while I'm inside. I have to blast the stereo so high that I can't even hear myself think or talk. It's quite annoying. Really nice over the bumps, really smooth. It kind of just like crawls and hovers and floats, but it also feels very composed. With this newer um, architecture, the Subaru Global Platform, Subaru has put an emphasis on rigidity, refinement, and of course modularity, as they are able to um, build a whole bunch of different cars based around this platform and architecture. We're gonna go through this light so we don't get stuck. Um, so there is that to factor in there. Let's move over real quick. Yeah, like I said, I really am impressed with this system and all the cars and all the systems on this car. Now, I want to get back on the highway specifically so I can show you guys what um, the eyesight says. So someone's getting pulled over. Someone is definitely getting pulled over. Okay, there's a red light camera here, so we're going to stop. Oh, accident. Never mind. So I can just talk to you guys a little bit more about the stuff. Um, so while you're driving, I have learned that these buttons are actually quite easy to access. They're kind of like your main buttons. If you're going to be accessing something, it's going to be these. Um, they're quite easy to access with your thumb. If you wanted to um, get to something like that. I usually drive like this or like this. I like to have my hands on the paddle shifter. So that's kind of why I like to have them. I don't know if it's just a me thing, but it is there. Um, <clears throat> Other than that, so let's, I'm going to prepare this right now. You can do this while you're on the highway or before ever, but to just prepare your eyesight system. You can press this button and that, uh, that prepares the um, radar cruise control. I really like this little display down here. We can see the car and the brake lights are on right there. Really cool little feature. And you can also repair the auto steer. I'm not going to turn that on right now as a kind of will intrude on these lines because they won't really pick up these lines really well with the cameras. I have not been able to test the cameras at night or in the dark just yet. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to work just as well as they do during the day. Um, that is one thing to keep in mind. Um, this is a camera-based system. Additionally, I, as of right now, I have stop, start, turned off. You can press that and toggle that right here where it will turn the engine off when you come to a stop. You also have automatic vehicle hold that if you press your foot hard enough on the brake, it will keep you in that position. Um, I'm going to indicate that I'm moving over to the left real quick and get back on the highway. Um, yes, right here. Stay away from the accident. The 
definitely. So like I was saying, auto stop start decided to just turn it on for some reason. I usually turn it off, but now it is um, on. As you can see right here, it will have a timer to see how long you're on auto stop start and how much gallon of fuel you're saving. Um, it's not too convincing for me to continue to use it. I'm just gonna leave it on right now for these purposes, but I'm not the biggest fan of it personally. This is a long, long light, guys. Hopefully we can um, start right back up. Uh, look at that, like magic, and we're back. Let's make a left. Auto stop start. Disabling that really annoying stuff. We wanna go east. Actually, we wanna go west, I'm sorry. We're going west. Back, <laughs> back on this. So, as you can see, performance isn't too bad. Um, CVT is really nice. It has seven simulated gear shifts. So there's, um, instead of six, there's seven. It kind of simulates being a seven speed automatic, which is quite interesting. Um, I think it's really smooth. I have zero complaints with Subaru CVTs. They work perfectly. They work really well. And I don't have any like kind of complaints about them. There's just a good um, gearbox. I know people don't like CVTs. They want to have gears. But the general crowd of who's buying these vehicles is not someone that's even going to notice probably and it does help you get decent fuel economy it gets in the mid 20s sometimes low 20s um, miles per gallon and which is not too bad um i i think that's a pretty decent uh fuel economy for such a big vehicle now also to note is the kind of commanding position of the um drive with the driving seat right here so you do have that you're kind of sitting on top of the vehicle so you can see the hood right there you have a nice command um, we're driving right into traffic oh boy sorry guys we're doing it driving into traffic um you do have a commanding um view of the hood which is really nice and you kind of have a commanding view of the road okay guys we've kind of time warped a little bit we have been stuck in traffic for this whole time so i couldn't really um show you guys all the stuff i wanted to show you and my phone died quickly so um we're back traffic sucks but i want to get into the um radar cruise control in these systems because i think they're really um, cool on the road so right now since i've pressed both the radar cruise control button right here and the um steering assist button they're both active on the display right here it also pulls up the display up there which is really nice um and with the steering assist button it does start recognizing the lanes um of the road which is cool it's seeing them from the camera which is really cool um, to fully inactivate the system, you're gonna double tap down, almost like on a Tesla autopilot sock on the set and reset button right here. Tap it down and now it's the car is doing its own thing right now. I'm not I'm not touching anything. It's doing it. It's stopping, it's starting, and um, <clears throat> it's basically driving itself. Really cool. Um, of course, you always have to have your hands on the wheel the whole time. There are steering sensors in here. Oh, Kia Stinger, really cool, sorry. <laughs> There's um sensors in the steering wheel that of course will be pressure sensors so you have to have your hands on the wheel otherwise it's going to beep at you and disengage now as you can see on these screens right here it is targeting the cars in front of us really well if you guys can see that it's like capturing them kind of like a target on them and it kind of uses the cars to gauge how far and the distance you want to go you can change the distance of how far you want to be in front of the car in front of you with these buttons right here i have it up to the two setting right now um, I believe we can go up to three, so the following distance. Really cool. Um, additionally, yeah, it's just driving itself right now. So this is a great feature to have in stop and go traffic. Now I can change the, how fast I'm going with these increments of five on this button. So go 35, 45, and just keep going up from there. I think it goes up to 80 around there. It's actually pretty good um, in that aspect. So as you can see, it's following the car, and now it's slowing down by itself. Since the car in front of me is slowing down, I'm not, I don't have my foot on the brake. I don't have my foot on the gas pedal at all. It's doing this. All I'm doing is keep my hand on the wheel. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Really nice stuff with that. I do like this system, especially on going on long drives. I like to drive. I really do. But this isn't a car that's like sporty or enjoying to drive. So much enjoying to drive that I would want to drive these long distances on these long straight highways put the eyesight system on, let it do its thing, and just relax, pay attention to the road, and you'll, you can be much more happier getting to your destination than being stressed, especially in this style of stop and go traffic that we have here. Also nice to note, we have the um, um, little warning indicators on each side for your blind spot. I love to have that. I don't think I can do this traffic much more, guys. I'm not a big fan of traffic, so <laughs> we might have to turn around in a little bit. 
So there, I got kind of got confused right there as that car pulled off and there was a divide in the median. So this is why you always have to pay attention. So I had to take control there. Now to reset it, you just double tap back down and it will um, reset itself. So like this, like all these systems, they're early on. You can't put your full faith and trust into them at all. You do have to be paying attention at all times. So you see all these accidents happening everywhere. It's because people think they can do whatever they want. I don't know if that's due to some companies not going to call anyone out, um, kind of marketing it as a full driverless system, but um, they're not. You have to be paying attention on at all times um, for your own safety, for everyone else's safety, and um, yeah, just get, make sure you do that. Don't be an idiot. Um, but over long distances, over um, nice periods of driving, these systems are nice. And this car in general, like I said before, is very comfortable to be in. It's a comfortable place to sit in. And I quite like it a lot. I would put Apple CarPlay on, but my phone is connected. Um, so that's my head right now. So we can't do that. Okay, guys, we're back. Traffic kind of cleared up and we're going to get off this because this continues for a long time. So right now I'm going to show you guys what sport drive mode looks like. It's now an SI drive mode. Now, the revs are gonna jump. It keeps the engine in the power band. And I think it's really nice of a sport system. It's not like a annoying fake thing. It actually does a little bit nice stuff. Pop it into manual. You do have seven simulated gears. Really nice body controllers. Not a lot of body roll, just a little bit enough um, in the corners. Again, not a performance car at all, but it handles really well for what it is. A family, people mover, crossover. That's really what this car is, and I think it handles well for that. We are still in manual mode right now. Let's see how we can get through this traffic. Um, for But for daily driving use for around town, I'm gonna keep it in intelligent mode because I do think that the sport short mode kind of is a little bit touchy and jumpy around town. It's nice on a highway if you're trying to get past someone really easy, but around town, I keep it in normal mode, which, or I think it's called intelligent mode. Sport intelligent drive, that's what SI drive stands for. Really smooth, really nice like before. And like I said, the steering is light, but also direct. So there's a good amount of fuel now. <laughs> it's very light and you kind of get a better feel of what's happening in the road once you start turning, of course. Um, I, honestly, I get more feel out of holding, putting my hand on this um, CVT selector for the gearbox over than um, the steering wheel, which is a little disappointing, but I do. I can say that the our 2014 Cross Track um, and present and 13 Cross Track does have better um, steering feel, even though it still is electric power assisted. I, I don't know why. It just there's a better. There's more communication going on there. Um, maybe because it was just an older generation of stuff. What is going on with that three series wagon right there? Look at that. I might have to go check that out real quick afterwards. But I'm just pulling in here to kind of give you guys a final wrap up of this Forester. awesome so guys and that is it we're gonna put it in park really nice stuff like i said before i'm pretty impressed with this thing it's it, i don't know why the sport model i think there's a little bit minor minor very minor <laughs> tuning to the suspension on the sport model or something maybe it's the bigger um wheels or different tires um or the addition of the sport sharp mode or something but it's a really nice place to be. I quite enjoy daily driving this. I think it's a really nice um, product. It doesn't do too bad on gas, doesn't do the best. Um, it drives pretty well, great amount of visibility, great safety systems, really responsive and quick infotainment system. Everything's really quick. There's not really that much lag. Um, I, it's very clean. I've never had any issues with this. I know people have had some issues, but um, not too hard to fix. And other than that, yeah, that's pretty much it with this Forester. I would definitely recommend to buy it, honestly. They go for around $28,000, $30,000 now for these um, mid-tier packages. And they can go a little bit higher if you go for the um, 
nicer um, interior package with full leather and everything. Um, you can get like a sensor up here that'll detect your different driver profiles by face scanning, really nice stuff. Or you can go base down to like the $25,000, $26,000 range to get like a stripped down model. Um, we want to throw it around and thrash it up. There's going to be a Subaru Forester Wilderness model coming down the road, lifted, more off-road prowess, off-road modes, cladding and a lot of stuff. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. Um, that'll be coming with the facelift for this car. Again, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and everything. And make sure you're subscribing to All Car News to stay up to date with everything going on in the automotive world. Again, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more.